Good morning, good morning, Cathedral family. Are you ready to praise the Lord in this place? Are you ready to praise the Lord in this place? You know, my name is Yus, my wife Esther and I, we are pastoring your awesome youth right now at this time. Every Sunday, we are having youth service, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and these youth are on fire for the Lord. Talking about on fire for Jesus, right? The Bible says in Psalms 100, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Do we have some grateful people in the house? Do we have some grateful people in the house? And then it continues, it says, come into his courts with praise. Can somebody praise the Lord in this place? Can somebody give him a shout of praise? Can somebody give him a shout of glory? We are gonna worship and praise the Lord. Get ready for the presence of God. Somebody make some noise. Woo, let's go. Welcome everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah in the sanctuary. You put your hands together with like this. Let's worship him today. Forgiveness 
everybody we're just going to continue to worship i believe that in these worship moments i believe that the supernatural can take place i really do i believe that when we kind of get behind the music and the production and the, the mechanics of what's going on and just tap into the spirit of what's going on i believe that we can touch the other side i believe that god wants to touch us i believe that he wants to just sit down in the middle of our situations and sh he's like, let me show you what I can do. Let me show you what I can do. And I believe that this is a house of miracles today. It's not just a house of gathering. This is a house of miracles. And I believe that when we come into this space, God wants to just pour out his blessings and grace. And I just, as we just sang, he wants to wash it over us. And I just pray that a wave of grace and mercy would flow over each and every one of you today. I pray that you would know that you're loved. I pray that you would know that you're seen. This is not about what we've done or what we've earned. It is about grace. It's about his good news. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just dispense your healing virtue over us, that you would guide us into a place of encounter with you today that would cause us to give thanks to our God for his goodness and his grace. We love you. We bless you. And in the mighty name of Jesus, all of God's people said, can we, one more time, can we put our hands together and just bless the name of the Lord? Thank you, Father. This is a house of worship. This is a house of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name yes. and This is a house of healing our hearts are full of faith and you have our full attention and you have the final say so we sing this in faith oh come alive in the name of jesus come alive in the name of jesus Sweet. 
everything. God, I believe your work. All things for good. I have fixed my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe your work. All things for good. Let's sing it together. Come on. I still believe your movement. I still believe your speed. God, I believe your work. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe your work. All things for good. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. God wants to do something. Bishop is about to step into this moment and take it to another place. I just want to encourage us all to just, it's not about a song, man. It's not about a personality. It's not about anybody up here. It's about him. It's about him. It's about him and, I, and what he wants to do in you. I believe we're speaking life. You're not singing a song. You're prophesying over our future, over our, 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 over our present speaking to those things come alive the dreams we used to have the faith we used to believe that god could redeem he could restore he could do it it's we're speaking come alive faith come alive belief come alive dreams come alive miracles come alive hope god do something in this moment come and do something in this moment mighty god mighty god mighty god Mighty God, mighty God. It was Jesus' custom to go to church. You came this morning and you brought him here with you. When we got here, we found him to be already here. Nobody ever left Jesus' presence without their need being met. Whatever your need is this morning, be it healing, comfort, encouragement, strength, guidance, direction, it's in the house. The great physician is in the house. 
The doctor who makes house calls is in the house. He has already read your prescription. He already knows what your need is. And he made you a promise this morning that by his miraculous, supernatural hand of intervention, he's saying to you this morning, receive your miracle from God. Receive your miracle from God. It may be relational, it may be financial, it may be physical. Receive this morning from the hand of the great physician. We join our faith together with our pastor and all of those who are joining with us online. On our other campuses, let's agree together this morning by faith that God, who loves you so, who values you so, who knows your every need, is going to impart his supernatural hand of intervention in your life, in your person, in your being, in your relationship. And all he's asking you to do is to believe and receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, because we have gathered in your name to worship, we've gathered in your name with gratitude, we gather in your name with expectancy. And in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we take authority over depression, over anxiety, over fear, over doubt, over worry, over brokenness. We take authority in the name that's above every name. Jesus! 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 This is a house of miracles. This is a house of prayer. This is a house of worship. This is a house of breakthrough. This is a house of the Word of God, and it's just getting started. So before you're seated, come on, one more thunderous ovation applause of praise and thanksgiving. Good morning, Cathedral fam. I'm grateful that you're here with us today, especially on an early Sunday morning. So my name is Hannah, and I know I'm new on the big screen, but it's finally my time. 
my time to shine the light on all our first time guests out there welcome and thank you for joining us so please go ahead and get a welcome card that was prepared especially for you you can go ahead and scan the qr code on the front or flip it over and fill it out at the back and we would love to get connected with you and your families speaking of families if you're engaged or married or you know in a committed relationship the One for Life premarital seminar is coming right up. You'll get the tools and resources you need to build stronger foundations for your marriage. It's a great investment, so please mark your calendars Saturday, March 25th. You can register with us online through our website at cathedraloffaith.org or download our app. This is a church that loves to celebrate. Our chosen generation knows how to party. So if you're 55 and up, please join them this Tuesday as they celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to wear green. There's always something happening at Cathedral of Faith. <laughs> oh my gosh, imagine you start putting bloopers to get the people to laugh. There's always something happening at Cathedral of Faith. So stay connected. Please download our app or look through our websites for the latest updates. See ya and enjoy service! Well, good morning, Cathedral of Faith. Isn't it a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord? Ah, oh, we're so glad you're here and it's so great to have with us our dear friend Thomas Windsor. He's a professor. He's the executive. Stand up, Thomas. He's He's an archaeologist, executive director of the Holy Land Research Institute. He's been over in Israel doing a digs over there. It's great to have you back with us. And it's exciting that today marks our 12th year anniversary of our Milpitas campus. Way to go, Pastor Robert and all the folks at our Milpitas campus. And it's exciting what's happening on our San Jose campus. Our coffee shop is now open. Our chapel will be, is being remodeled and it will be done in May. And it's going to be unbelievable. Our digital studio, we're putting the final touches on that. We opened our infant care and preschool with Dr. Cliff Dordery. That's now fully functioning. And it couldn't happen without this guy right here, Big Aaron Scott. Aaron Scott, he joined our team 18 months. He's our facility director. Way to go, Aaron. Thanks for all that you're doing. So many exciting things. As a matter of fact, coffee shop is going to be open Monday through Friday, starting at 7.30 in the a.m. So if you're in the area, come by for a great cup of coffee. Well, how many know in three weeks, Easter is going to be here in three weeks. We're so excited what God is not only what he's already done. Hundreds of people have already come to Christ, but we're believing that hundreds more are going to come to Christ. And that's what our staff and our, we've been praying for you, we've been fasting for you and your family, that you're going to experience more heaven in the coming days, in your family, at school, where you work, in your relationships. And we want to encourage you to be praying for that one person that needs to know Jesus Christ in their life. And I just want to take a moment just to close our eyes, just for a second, to ask God to put that one person in our life that needs to know Jesus right now, God. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do in this person's life. And this family member. And I want to encourage you as God gives you that name every morning to declare God's word of his love over that person's life, of his grace and salvation. We're going to believe that that person's going to come to know Jesus Christ. Amen? And then the second thing I want to encourage you to do, we're going to have some tools for you to do this, but invite them to come with you Easter Sunday. This is the time of year the statistics say that People are open to come to church with you. All they need is an invite, amen? So let God believe for the salvation of that one family member, that friend, or that person you, you work with, amen? How many, let's just give God praise in advance for what he's gonna do. We're so excited. And if you wanna have a great life, here's what Jesus said. He goes, the number one thing that we're to do is to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and of all of our strength. And when we put God first in every part of our life, he promises that he will direct us and he will bless our efforts with success. And when we give God our very best, our first fruits, he promises that he will open up the windows of heaven for an overflow of blessings in your life, an overflow of peace, an overflow of joy, 
an overflow of wisdom, of influence and resources. Because God, if you don't have overflow in your life, you can't be a blessing to anyone else. Amen? How many are going to believe that God's the God of the overflow, that he will supply every need according to his riches and glory? Thank you to all the church family for the ways that you give of your time and your talents and your resources to help us to be a blessing to so many people. Lots of easy ways to give, of course. You can give through the cathedral app, you can give online, or you can give to one of the ushers on your way out. But thank you, thank you, thank you to all the church family for all the ways that you give. Well, how many are ready to receive the word of the Lord today? My brother's got another awesome message. So let's go to Living Strong. Cathedral family, all month we've been in training, in spiritual training, leaning into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. How do you move from being a fan to being a follower? I saw this bumper sticker that read, I hope you're following Jesus as close as you're following me. Hello. <laughs> oh my. When it comes to being a follower, how do you press in? How do you get close? Well, I invite you to once more join me on a journey. And today our journey starts with a towel. Then when it comes to being a follower of Jesus, it means not only taking up your cross, but taking up your towel. So are you, are you ready to train? All right, here we go, Cathedral. It's great to see everybody. God is good. And all the time. Well, thanks so much for being here. It's great to see you, whether you're on site, out in the parking lot, those who are watching online. So glad that you're here. We're on this journey called CrossFit, the key to living strong. And we're leaning into what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to move from being a fan to being a follower. And today we continue that journey. I'm going to invite you, if you would, to stand with me, please, for the reading of what really is a memory verse for the entire series. And if you would, read it out loud with me. Let's fill this place with the word of God, everybody. He said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Can we give God praise for the word, the life-giving word that we find in Jesus Christ? Father, thank you so much for this wonderful, this wonderful cathedral family and friends who are with us today, guests. Thank you for loving us like you do, and thank you for taking us from faith to faith and grace to grace and glory to glory, moving us from being a fan to being a follower. And over these next few moments, as we lean into your word, I pray that we'd hear the one thing that we need to hear so that we can leave here taking that one thing, applying it to our lives, 
And this week will be genuinely, authentically different because we've met you in this moment. That's our heart, that's our desire. And as always, God, start with me, start with me. And I pray this in the mighty, matchless, marvelous name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. can we give him praise one more time? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, before you're seated, tell somebody, I'm ready to train. Go ahead and do that. I'm ready to train. Now, today, I invite you to walk with me through a story that we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and allow God to speak to your heart afresh and anew from this story. It all begins with dirty feet. The disciples have dirty feet. Uh, they've been walking all day with open-toed sandals. The roads are filthy. And as they gather together that night for dinner, all of them, Jesus and his disciples, they all have dirty feet. How dirty were they? If you've ever worked out at the gym for two hours and taken off your socks, you can imagine. How dirty were they if you went to the beach, a warm day at the beach, and you got home and looked at your toes? You can imagine. If you've ever, ever seen my brother without his shoes, like right up here, you can imagine. I saw this one little girl, and she has her, you know, looking at her feet, and she says, oh, come on, they aren't that bad. And the reality is, yes, they are. The disciples, as they sit around the table, all of them have dirty feet. Now, normally, when you'd come to dinner, there would be a servant at that door to wash your feet. But for some reason, nobody's there. You see, washing feet was a dirty job. If you've ever seen that show, Dirty Jobs, they'll focus on jobs that, well, jobs like being a pig farmer or being a roadkill cleaner. If that show had been in the first century, washing feet would have been featured on that show because it was a very dirty job. It was too dirty for any of the guests to do. You had to have a servant. And it was so dirty that you just didn't have to have, just not any servant could do it. The lowest of the servants would wash feet. And for some reason, as they're sitting around the table, nobody, well, nobody's there to wash their feet. And Jesus sees what's going on and he uses this as a teaching moment that would absolutely rock the disciples' world. And in John chapter 13, we read this amazing words. He got up from the meal, Jesus did, and took off his outer clothes. He wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a large bowl. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet. He dried them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And the disciples are not sure what to do. Jesus washes their feet. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. Put yourself in their situation. You're having dinner with Jesus, and then the next thing you know it, he is washing your filthy feet. What would you do? What would you say? Well, no one says anything until, of course, the most vocal of the disciples, Peter, he says to Jesus, Jesus, this is not cool. This is crazy. And he says, you will never wash my feet. Never. Say that with me. Never. Now, isn't that interesting? Peter is humble not enough to recognize that he doesn't deserve for his feet to be washed by Jesus, but he's proud enough to tell Jesus what he should and shouldn't do. <laughs> Human beings, we're a complex lot, aren't we? We got both things going on the inside of us. But Jesus uses this to become a teaching moment that would rock the world. What he does in this passage, he creates an oxymoron. 
Now, an oxymoron is when you take two words that don't seem like they should be together and you put them together. For example, if you take the word bitter and you take the word sweet and you put them together, bitter sweet, or you take the word pretty and you take the word ugly and you put them together, pretty ugly, <laughs> or you take the word act and you take the word naturally and you put them together, act naturally, or you take the word airline and you take the word food and you put them together, <laughs> airline food, hello. Well, Jesus takes the word servant and puts it together with the word leader. Think of it another way. Anybody like donuts? I have a maple bacon donut in my hands. Now, the first time I had one of these, Dr. Wayne brought me a donut from this place in the city called Dynamo Donuts. They're known for their donuts. And he brought it to me and I looked at it and I thought, you have to be kidding me. A maple bacon donut. I had never heard of such a thing because, well, it didn't seem like they go together. Bacon you have with your eggs and maple you have with your pancakes. But what they did is they took this maple and bacon and put it together and it just didn't seem like it went until I took a bite. <laughs> Can you say donut heaven? <laughs> it was a taste of heaven. In fact, don't take my word for it. Pastor Rick actually made this this morning. And Jeff, would you mind taking a bite of this maple <laughs> bacon donut and see how it is? It's all good. And that's what Jesus does. He takes the word servant and he takes the word leader, two things that his disciples in a million years would have never put together. Either you're a servant or you're a leader. And Jesus puts them together and he creates a recipe. This is what a taste of heaven is like. He says this in John 13. He says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, that's what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. So you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. I've created a recipe. Lean into it and you'll discover a little taste of heaven. Now what Jesus is doing is he's showing them how to use the position and power that they have. There's a film called Bruce Almighty. And in that film, Morgan Freeman plays the character of God and Jim Carrey plays the character of Bruce. And the first time Morgan Freeman as God shows up and presents himself to Bruce, Bruce doesn't recognize him because look at what God has in his hands. We're looking for room seven. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> you want me to even those up for you? <laughs> How do I get to room seven? I'll be on the seventh floor. Stairs right over there. I'd rather take the elevator. Out of order. I love the stairs, though. They were my second choice. Do you mind giving me a hand with this floor? What? <laughs> That's good. Are you serious? Oh, uh, I'm kind of busy. Um, rain check. I'll hold you to it. I'm free on the seventh! That's seven! Seventh, that's seven it is. It's a stunning image. There is God with a mop and a bucket in his hands. And that image is drawn from John 13. Jesus shows up and, well, he knows who he is. 
When it comes to position and power, in John 13, 3, we read this. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had put everything. Say that word with me. Everything. Say it again. Everything. Say it one more time. Everything under his power. He also knew he had come from God and was returning to God. He knew who he was. He knew where he was headed. He was secure in his identity. This person who is taking this dirty job, washing these dirty feet, one day Jesus will have everything under his feet. Can somebody say amen to that? Everything is under his power. And yet he gives us a way of handling the position and power that we have because every single one of us in this room, to one degree or another, we have all been given position and power we have. And if you have position and power, don't deny what you have. Don't turn away from what God has blessed you with, but instead take that position and power you have and ask God to help you to use it as a platform to serve and to bless and to help and to make other people successful. What if I was to do that at school or church or in the neighborhood or at work? March is Women's History Month and, and I just wanna give a shout out to all the amazing cathedral women in the room. Can we give it up for all the amazing cathedral women? All the history makers. Oh, come on, guys. Let me hear it. Yeah. Here we go. I was reading about this one remarkable woman, and her name is Cheryl Backhilder. And for years, she was the chief executive officer of Popeye's Chicken. Now, it had me right there because I love Popeye's Chicken. And I went on to read that she, when she took over, I mean, she improved the guest ratings dramatically. She increased market share by 8%. She took the business from being $300 million a year in revenue to $1.3 billion in revenue. She's been profiled by the Wall Street Journal. She's won a major award in the restaurant industry. Most importantly, she is a fully devoted follower of Jesus. And... If you ask her, what has been the secret to your success in industry, specifically at Popeyes? And this is what she'll say. She'll say, what I did is I worked really hard to create a culture of servant leadership. She even wrote a book entitled, Dare to Serve, How to Drive Superior Results by Serving Others. And that's what it looks like to move from being a fan to being a follower, creating a culture of servant leaders, using our position and power to make other people successful. As you continue through the story and you see what Jesus is doing, I mean, on the one hand, it just seems like such a little thing. There was a police officer who was walking his beak one day and a, uh, a little girl came up, she was six years old, and she had said, excuse me, sir, are you a cop? <laughs> and he said, yes, I am. And she said, well, my mom told me if I ever needed help, I should ask a policeman, is that right? And he said, yes, that's right. And she said, sir, could you help me? Could you help me tie my shoe? And the policeman said, sure I can. And it's the little things, the little sacrifices, the little opportunities, the little acts of kindness. This is what most often leads from being a fan to being a follower. This is the everyday stuff of life. Mother Teresa once said this, she said, not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. And we can. Yeah, that's a great, great statement. See, what Jesus did in washing these feet 
Well, it took a little time and it took a little energy and it took a little effort. I mean, compared to the cross, the cross was a very heavy lift. The cross is around the corner. Now, as Jesus is having dinner with his disciples, we call it the Last Supper. Back then it was known as the Passover meal. It was a meal in which they celebrated how God had delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians in the past. But what Jesus does when he goes to the cross, he creates a new Passover. He creates a better Passover. He creates an even bigger deliverance. They have been delivered from slavery. Jesus delivers us from the slavery to sin. They have been delivered from bondage. Jesus delivers us from the bondage to evil. They had delivered, been delivered from Pharaoh. Jesus delivers us from the devil himself. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. That's what you call deliverance. And every time we come to the table, we remember the great deliverance that Jesus gave to us when he went to the cross. Dirty feet. It seems like such a little thing, but that's where you and I, most of the time, that's how we move from being a fan to being a follower. It's visiting someone in the hospital. It's well, it's opening a door for someone at the mall. It's buying a cup of coffee for a coworker. It's hosting a Bible study in your home. It's tutoring a, a student who's struggling in school. It's the little opportunities. It's the little sacrifices, the little act of kindnesses that are done with great love. In fact, what if we had a competition? Let's make that the cathedral challenge for the day. We can do anything for one day with God's grace, amen? And what if for the rest of the day, we just tried to outserve each other? For the rest of today, I'm gonna look at little opportunities, little sacrifices, little acts of kindness, and engage them all with great love because little things in the hands of God can end up being very large, very large. And then we see Jesus as he makes his way around the table. Oh my. Jesus washes Judas' feet. Are you kidding me? Jesus knew at this point that Judas was going to betray him. The Bible says in John 13, the devil had already tempted Judas. And later on that Jesus knew who would betray him. Jesus had invited Judas into his inner circle and Judas was a part of that inner circle for three years. But not too long from now, Judas is going to sell out Jesus. He's going to use his position and power to sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. If you've ever hired somebody and you brought them into your inner circle and it didn't work out and they stabbed you in the back, Jesus feels your pain. He gets us. And yet when he comes to the feet of Judas, he still washes those feet. He wouldn't surrender his power. Judas had the power to break his heart, but he wouldn't let Judas sour his heart. He held on to his freedom. He didn't surrender his power. And then that brings things to me and I wonder what would I have done if I was going around the table and this guy, I know he's going to stab me on the back. Would I have washed his feet? I think what I would have done is prayed for his feet. Because... Friday was St. Patrick's Day. I'm a bit Irish. And so I would have prayed one of my favorite Irish prayers for Judas. I would have said, may those who love us, love us. And those who don't love us, may God turn their hearts. And if he can't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles. So we'll know them by their limping. 
turn his ankle. But here's the deal. When I pray that kind of prayer and I twist an ankle instead of washing feet, I surrender my control. I lose my freedom. And I miss out on my blessing. See, people, frankly, there are people in your life, there are people you know. There will always be people. And it's hard to wash their feet. It is. Because not only do they have dirty feet, they have darkened hearts. But don't give away your freedom. They may have the power to break your heart. Don't let them have the power to sour your heart. Hold on to your freedom, amen? There's an ancient parable about a, a monk that's trying to rescue a scorpion that's stuck in the mud. And so the monk has a stick, but every time he reaches out to try to save the scorpion, the scorpion strikes at the stick. Well, there's another person watching this go on for a while, and finally he says, hey man, just give it up. That's a scorpion, it's his nature to sting. And the monk said, it may be his nature to sting, but it's my nature to save. And I'm not gonna change my nature for his nature. Don't give away your freedom. Because when you take hold of your freedom, you take hold of your blessing, because that's where Jesus says, this kind of lifestyle will take you. We read again in John chapter 13, Jesus says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You will be blessed. Say that with me. You will. Say it one more time. You will. Say, I will be blessed. Say that with me. I will be blessed. Do you believe that? Do you own it? Jesus puts that out there for us. It's good to know them. If you don't know them, you can't do them. But the blessing is not in the knowing. The blessing's in the doing. And if you do these things, Jesus says you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Not you may be blessed, but you will be blessed. Because if the left hand is dirty, when the right hand washes the left hand, both hands get clean. And this is true in so many ways, on so many different levels. Study after study has shown that those who get involved in serving others, it increase their level of happiness, it improves their health outcomes, it'll even turbocharge your spiritual growth. There was a survey done with church people and they asked them, those that were volunteering, what kind of effect does volunteering have on your spiritual growth? And 92% of those who served regularly in ministry, 92% that it said it helped them significantly in their spiritual growth, and 63% said it, it helped them as much as Bible study or as praying on so many levels. You will be blessed if you do this, because there's an even deeper truth that goes something like this, you simply cannot outgive God. When you lean into self-giving love, you cannot, you cannot outgive God. The disciples once asked Jesus a question, they said, look Jesus, we've left it all. When it comes to serving and sacrifice and surrender, we've left it all, is it worth it? Now I would have expected Jesus to rebuke them, and said, you small-minded people, just do it because it's the right thing to do. Following me is the right thing to do. But instead, Jesus doesn't rebuke them. He says, if you want to know if it's worth it, I'll tell you. He wants them to know that not only is following Jesus the right thing to do, but following Jesus is the best thing to do. And you can see this in his answer. Jesus said, mark my words, no one who sacrifices house, brother, sister, mother, father, children, land, whatever, because of me and the message will lose out. They'll get it all back, but multiplied many times in homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land, also in troubles. And then the bonus of eternal life. What that is saying 
is you cannot outgive God. Lean into the life and watch how God blesses you again and again and again. Can we give God praise? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In just a moment, we're going to go to the waters of baptism. But before we do, let me ask you a question. Where is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Where do you need to take up your cross and follow Jesus? Life is too short. It's time for me to stop being a fan. And move into the area where I'm a fully devoted follower. I saw this Instagram post, and in the Instagram post, Jim Carrey, who played the actor in Bruce Almighty, well, he's talking about the way of the cross and what it meant for him to take up his cross. And as you listen to his words, think about what Jesus is speaking to you about. I've had some challenges in the last couple of years myself, uh, and uh, ultimately, I believe that suffering leads to salvation. Uh, we have to somehow accept, not deny, but feel our suffering, and then we make one of two decisions. We either decide to go through the gate of resentment, which leads to vengeance, which leads to self-harm which leads to harm to others, or we go through the gate of forgiveness, which leads to grace. Just as Christ did on the cross, he suffered terribly, and he was broken by it to look upon the people who were causing that suffering, or the situation that was causing that suffering, with compassion and with forgiveness. And that's what opens the gates of heaven for all of us. Amen. Wow. Would you stand with me, please? And wherever you're at on campus, those watching online, bow your heads with me for a moment. Close your eyes and, and focus in on what God is speaking to you about. If you'd say, Pastor Ken, I know about Jesus. I've heard about Jesus, but I've never really stepped across the line and surrendered my life to Jesus. And today I want to do that. Every journey starts with a step. You can begin that journey today. If that's a decision you're making, would you lift up your hand real high? I want to agree with you that today's your day. God bless you. God bless you right over here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Those who are watching online, God sees your heart. God sees your hand. Those who are in the parking lot. Father, I thank you for this moment in time. Thank you for all of the folks who today are, are stepping across the line and surrendering their life to Jesus, confessing that Jesus is Lord of their life and they're receiving him as Savior. And Father, I pray for all of us today as, as we lean in more and more into what it means to follow you. God, we need your grace. We can't do this on our own. But Father, by your grace, your grace will take us to that place of blessing where we'll get a little taste of heaven, even here, right on earth. Take us deeper, take us further. Again, God, start with me. When we pray this, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, amen. amen. Can we give God praise, amen, hallelujah. Shelly's going to come, and we're going to go into the waters of baptism. Before we do, I invite you to read the Apostles' Creed with me. This is what we believe as followers of Jesus. Everybody, would you say this with me, the Apostles' Creed? If we can bring that up. There we go. Everybody, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Pastor Shelley, do you believe that today? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus? You love him with all your heart. Upon that confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, down with the old and up with the new. Hallelujah. Are you ready to celebrate? Yeah. Hallelujah. Everything I was, everything I've been, God, I got my regrets. I was a wretched man. You took me in, drowned my sin, said dead man come alive. Then I left it in the water, like yesterday's a history. I left it in the water, like I went down dirty and came out of me. Left it in the water, left it in the water, left it in the water. song in our spirit. Amen. 
If you need prayer after service, all team will be down here to pray with you and pray for you. The journey toward Easter continues next week. And then don't forget, let's have a competition this afternoon. Come on, let's go toe to toe. Let's see who can outserve each other. Amen. In fact, you can do it even before you get out of the parking lot. Wouldn't it be something if there was a great traffic jam? Because we're all in this competition. You go before me. No, you go before me. And we were all just stuck out there together. I love our cathedral family. Have a wonderful week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine brightly upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. And this week, may you know every day that you're loved by God, made by God. And be a blessing to your world for his name and his glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. All God's people said, amen. Have an awesome day, Cathedral.